Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation and I'm so happy to have you here. This is a big, big breakthrough month and I can't wait to share all the treasures with you. Welcome to my second part of my three-part May 2019 transit video series. I'm going to walk you through the transits for the first half of the month. And if you haven't already watched my May video prior to this about the massive retrogrades, please go watch that first before you watch this one because there is a ton of juicy fruit in it and you are going to want to know about these retrogrades. They are nothing shy of being absolutely massive and this is all going on internally and externally so go watch that video before this one and then come on back here also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next May video which is my third one where I covered the full moon and the transits for the second half of the month so happy birthday Taurus this is going to be a crazy ass month let me just tell you a lot is happening a lot is going to be exposed a lot's going to be revealed we're really shape-shifting our truths and our values. So it's an internal shape shifting. You'll see a little bit in the outside world um, and it's gonna come to a full blown fruition. The seeds that we plant right now will germinate and it will come to fruition by the end of this year. So listen up, okay? You might wanna get out your calendar and write these dates down. I really am focusing on the dates that have a bang or a pop or a goodness or a greatness or a shift or a change in them. So let's go, May 4th, let's start with that. The new moon in Taurus. Now, if you are a Taurus, uh, this is a big one for you. And if your moon is in Taurus, this is also big for you. So both my mom and dad have moons in Taurus. So when the new moon sits on their moon, it's a radical opportunity for great change. You need to know where Taurus is in your chart to know where this new moon wants to shift you. If you have Taurus in the 12th house, you have an opportunity to create spiritual growth. If you have Taurus in the 8th house, you have an opportunity to create new intimacy or even receive a financial gift from somebody else's money. If you have Taurus in the 10th house and the new moon is in your 10th house, you have a new opportunity around career and the great work in your life. So the new moon in Taurus, of course, it's conjunct the sun in Taurus. And uh, this is a big, brand new, juicy, juicy beginning for you. So you can spend the day trying to get your finances organized or make a commitment to yourself about getting peaceful, um, embracing beauty, peace, love, harmony, everything sweet in your life. You may even be kind of focused on a beautifying project, whether it's yourself or your house or your new boat um, or your apartment, but creating love and harmony. The women in your life, they might take a prominent role. Um, this is a great time for starting a brand new relationship, a love relationship. This is a great time to buy an animal or rescue an animal. This is a great time to plant some new trees or do something with the earth. Taurus is earth, and this is a time when we could really start a new earthbound project. This is a great day to buy a home. Manifest on this day, you know, see what it is you want to create and feel it, put it in your heart, and really sit with yourself, send it up to the universe so it can actually take form and take shape. To all my Geminis right now, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody, nobody give my Geminis, any more coffee. <laughs> they don't need any more coffee. So if you are Gemini rising, a Gemini moon, a Gemini sun sign, or even a Gemini in Mars, no more coffee for you. Because let me just tell you right now, on May 5th, Mars in Gemini is opposite Jupiter in Sagittarius, but it's an out of bounds Mars. Mars in Gemini is sort of a war with words, if you will. It's somebody who, who has mental gymnastics, who can just really, 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 really clip. Um, their energy is just pop, 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 pop. And um, they can just do a thousand things at once with their body and their mind. And they can, they can be completely out of synchronicity with their body and their mind, and it flows perfectly. You know, when it's in opposition of Jupiter, it's sort of like 
watch for this out there in the world, okay? Watch this for yourself where you become a hypocrite or you um, rebel against your own values. You can even sabotage yourself a little bit. Let's say, for example, you want to be sober or you don't want to eat chocolate or you gave up fats. Well, this is a day when your behavior can kind of do the opposite of what you actually value. So be careful that you don't sabotage yourself too badly on May 5th. But this is sort of an opposition or a rebellion against either the truths and values that are being imposed upon you, or you may feel that your values are being threatened. You may feel your religion or your spiritual beliefs or the laws in which you govern your own body with are violated or threatened or pushed upon. Be, be wary for that. So on May 6th, this day has two faces. Don't fall for it, okay? Bring your patience and love and gratitude to the table and rise your frequency above the riffraff. You are not the riffraff. So let me tell you about the two faces to May 6th, okay? So Mercury enters Taurus. Yay, right? It's so great. Such nice news. And it's especially nice news for my water signs and um, primarily, not so much Scorpio, but Cancers and Pisces really get the benefit and all the earth signs. Capricorn, give those Capricorns a little break, Virgo and Taurus. So Mercury, the planet of the mind, planet of communication, planet of thinking, the planet of your cognitive skills moves out of Aries and into Taurus. So the mental mind shift from Aries is, you know, Aries is, I, I got to know it. I got to say it. I got to learn it. I got to think about it. I got to do it. I got to go, 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 go. Aries, 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 Aries. We're scattered. We're doing it. We're all, uh, you know, we're crazy. And it moves into Taurus energy, which is more deliberating and plodding and peaceful and thoughtful and slower. And it's a planner and harmonizing. And it's a little bit more of a mm, thoughtful approach to thinking and a more thoughtful approach to communicating than Aries. If you think about it, Taurus is ruled by Venus. And Aries is ruled by Mars. So when this is your Mercury planet, when Mercury shifts into Taurus, it takes on a Venetian quality. Love, beauty, peace, and harmony. People who have Mercury in Taurus usually have a very beautiful voice, right? So when Mercury is in Aries, it's ruled by Mars. So it's biting. It can be cutting. It can be straightforward. It can be direct. It doesn't mince words. It is commanding. It gives orders. It's a com commander-in-chief, a leadership quality to it. It's like, Bada bing, bada boom, do this, do that. It's kind of like the Italian New Yorker. You know, just bottom line, bottom line. No hellos, no goodbyes, just execution. With, with it, Mercury moving into Taurus, there's a lot of harmonizing. There's a lot of relationship building. But remember that I said that it has two faces. So what's happening here is that Mercury moves into Taurus, but it actually bumps right smack into alignment with Uranus. And Uranus is our progressive, radical planet that creates this electrical surge and breakthrough energy. Uranus does not like slow plotting plants. It is combustible, it is unpredictable, and it shoots off wildly like lightning in numerous directions. It's like a meteor and you don't know where it's going to land. You don't know if it's going to hit you directly or go right past you. So it's unpredictable and it has surprises coming back and forth in every which way that you didn't expect. So how interesting of a tease is this transit? You get Mercury moving out of this warrior energy in Aries into this methodical Taurus, but it gets struck by lightning. So from May 6th through May 10th or a touch longer, you're going to see out there in the world this like crazy ass communication planet just go all around, all around and back again. So I just want you to be ready for it and expect it. Expect people to say shocking and surprising things. And you might be one of those people. Between May 6th and May 10th, bring a little extra grace to the table. Your mind may want to slow down right now. It may be utterly exhausted from having been, you know, working with that Aryan energy, but until it moves away from Uranus, it's going to be jumpy. And you may feel a little bipolar. You may feel like amped up and then exhausted 
and ugh, both at the same time, you may feel like just throwing in the towel. However, from the 10th or 11th of May until the 21st of May, you are going to get a nice, mental ride in the sweeter side of Taurus because it moves off of Uranus. So fill your mind up at that time until the, between the 10th through the 21st. Fill your mind up with everything that helps you find peace and harmony within. So take your mind on a long meditation or shut it down and walk in nature. Breathe in the beauty of life. Do anything that brings you mental clarity and peace. Moving on, if your love life is confusing, this next day is going to be very interesting for you. And I would love to know how this affects you. So please write in the comments how May 7th showed up for you. So Venus is in Aries, okay? And that's the love planet, and it is in challenging aspect to Saturn and Capricorn. And this aspect can also go two ways. One, it can be a very loyal day where you make a loving commitment to someone. It can be a day of marriage or union or the day when you realize, I want to be exclusive with you. I want you to be my girlfriend or I want you to be my boyfriend. Or a day when your commitment goes to the next level. So it can be a day of real clarity for you. However, it can also go in a different direction where you can feel like love is lost, love is squashed, love is diminished, love is painful, love hurts. If it doesn't lead to a deeper union, it could lead to the feelings of, I feel inadequate on the subject of love. So the key to this one is stability. You just be stable and coast through it. Don't be radical. Radical energy can really kill this one off. May 9th. This is one of the best days of the year, in my opinion. So the sun is in Taurus, and it's in this glorious aspect to Neptune and Pisces. It is such a beautiful, such a loving, such a spiritual, such a gorgeous day. I believe this day is exalted. So tap the spiritual essence of this day and make it your best day. But also, this is a day to love others, and you can love others easily. This is a day to really reach out and make somebody feel extraordinary by the gift by the gift of giving or sharing your heart. This is the day to go bring random flowers to the nursing home. I mean, honestly, this is a day when love can heal the world. If we all chose to step into the beautiful, powerful love aspect of this day, we could literally heal our collective wound. So May 9th is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day of the month. And this day affects everyone, but it's going to especially affect you if you, and it's going to be louder. It affects everybody, but it's going to be louder if you are an earth sign or water sign. So Capricorn gets a little boost, Virgo and Taurus do great, and then that Pisces um, energy in Cancers do really well. Cancers do extraordinarily well on that day. On May 9th, there's another little piece to this day, and Venus is in Aries, and it trines Jupiter and Sagittarius. It's a little tricky. I can't wait to see how this plays out this day. This day is so interesting and fascinating and glorious, so leave me a comment and let me know. But Venus is in Aries and it trines this Jupiter and Sag. It's going to be a great day because of this tran transit. This is big love and big money, okay? So it's big love, big money. So celebrate full out. However, on this day, Venus is squaring Pluto exact in Capricorn. So there can be a destructive element to it as well. If you're in the way of somebody's adrenaline, ego, maniacal ego rant in life, or if that's inside of you. 
Don't let your ego get the best of you so, you so you can harness the higher octave of this beautiful, beautiful day. I just want you to know that this is a day when you can truly receive. You can give and change someone's life and then they receive you and you can also receive. The next day, May 11th, that I want to talk about, you know, this is a day for earth signs to win big. So May 11th and the 14th, earth signs really like rake in all the good stuff. But it's actually a beneficial placement for every single person. These two days are huge, huge, huge power surge days. The sun in Taurus trines happy aspect to Saturn in Capricorn and Pluto in Capricorn. And it's a day for you to just step into your power, be bold, don't shrink, take it on, step into the risk. This is the day in which you win. So this is the day that you want to have that job interview. You want to ask for a promotion. You want to set yourself up to earn more money. You want to give yourself a raise or ask for a raise. What are you going to do with this big energy day? This is a powerful day. This is a day when you want to scale the mountain and take on the world. So May 15th. Venus enters Taurus. So now you're going to feel more sensual during this transit. Venus is at home here. Oh my God, Venus loves being in Taurus. It is exalted. It is high functioning. It is glorious and good. It's good food. It's comfortable clothes. It's a beautiful environment. It's gorgeous music. It is anything that smells good, essential oils or aromas. I mean, this is the day when uh, you are just filled, overflowing with the senses. And you also tend to develop stable, long-term relationships if you plant the seeds on this day. May 15th is a great day to start a new relationship or go on a first date or meet somebody. This is a beautiful, gorgeous placement where we crave harmony and beauty. You may be on a beauty kick right now. You may be getting a facial or a massage, or you might be considering a beautifying project for your body, yourself, your home, and you might really embrace all things feminine on this day. Hmm. If you would like a reading with me, you can, you can book one on my website at soulnavigation.com. But I want to just tell you one thing. I have a really large practice. I have 7,000 clients in 17 countries, and my calendar is really full, so please be patient with me. Bring your Taurus mind to my uh, booking calendar at soulnavigation.com. But I have another idea for you, and if you would like to join my VIP program, you can do that through my online scheduler too. You just go to soulnavigation.com, and, and you click on the Book Now button, and then scroll down and just find Meredith's VIP circle. And you'll get to have access to me once a month. You'll get to ask a personal question. You'll get to learn all about astrology. It's a way that we can interact on a monthly basis. It is so affordable and so inexpensive. It's less than, for the entire year, the cost of a one-hour reading. Click on the link above to learn more about my VIP group and see if you would enjoy it. People that, have, that are in that group absolutely love it, and I find it fascinating. And if you have any more questions or if you have an idea for the next video you'd like us like me to do, just leave a little comment and I try to answer them all. And we have one more video coming up in May, so be sure you're subscribed and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye for now.